So thanks for joining us today for Your Real, Your Ideal. As always, I'm looking forward to this conversation. Um, today we're going to talk about dreamers, the people who are always doing a little dreaming out there, right? <laughs> and, and it's hard to balance with the realistic that we talk about. <laughs> so um, Sandy, do you want to give us a start? Yeah. Um, first of all, I'm excited. I look at the number. It's like number 15. Really? I know. So I know. Episode so 15. So that's and, very exciting. And talking about dreamers, this was kind of a dreamer scenario for us that we made a reality. <laughs> right. And part <laughs> of it was acting on it and just saying, yeah. do it. But it right. is, you know, back to the dreamers. It, it's so different. I tell wouldn't you say it's fairly true that you and I are wired differently, but very much the same that we tend to be planners. We tend to shoot for back to your real, your ideal. We shoot for great things, but it always has a plan. And so right. there's probably a lot of real in what we do. You know, we go down to the real. So dreamers can be a little bit out there for us. Is that a fair comment, Amy? That's a fair comment. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> and so <clears throat> Gosh, last episode, if anybody wants to hear how wonderful our mothers are, listen to the last episode 14. And I'm going to start this one out with my very another, another very wise story <laughs> from my mother was, I tend to be a realist and I tend to be practical, but I do shoot for ideals, okay? Which is not the same as the definition of a dreamer who might be more uh, fanciful, think about fantasies, I'm going to win the lottery, and when I win the lottery, here's I'm going to spend it. And how would you spend it if you won the lottery would be a question asked to me. And I think, well, why would I answer that? Because I'm not going to win the lottery. The odds are so, I mean, I, why, why would I even think about that? Right. Um, so that's kind of how I'm wired. <clears throat> and probably about 20 years ago, um, <clears throat> my mother was staying with us, and my first husband tended to be more of a dreamer. Okay. And again, when I say this, it's just wiring. We're, I'm not saying anybody is right, wrong. If anything, I'm probably, I'm being negative to myself that yeah. I need to be more of a dreamer. And yeah. he was going on and on and on about some different things he was going to do, some uh, things that were on, maybe he didn't say bucket list, but he was going on and on and on about uh, different things that to me seemed like they were just so fanciful and out there. And I wasn't purposefully, but I was kind of shutting him down. Like, well, that's never going to happen. You know, do the math on that. Or we have three kids. Well, how, figure the time. How are you ever going to have time to do these 10 things? You know, whatever it was, start a business. And I kept coming up with all the reasons, everything he came up with and his eyes would light up and it was so exciting. And I was very kindly shutting him down. It wasn't a dispute. It wasn't a fight but I would bring the practical into everything and say, that's just not gonna happen. And my mom pulled me aside and she later, and she said, you know, sometimes you gotta let people have hopes and dreams. You can't, sh you don't, don't tell people what they can't do. Even if it's a small possibility, people need hopes and dreams, let them dream, it's okay. And it was the first time somebody kind of called me on that and said, you don't have to point out to people that something is unrealistic and it can't be done. And I've used that advice even when I have a client, a friend, and they have a dream that in my mind, I'm doing the mental math on the numbers because usually it comes back to affordability or the time, right? right? How much time do you have in a week? And it doesn't mean that I am going to not tell them the real in the hours, in the amounts, the probability but how I present it to them, I let them talk about their dreams and by not shutting them down too early and realizing that hopes and dreams are good and going back to my mother's advice, I frame the conversation differently that they can come to their own conclusion. So am I great at that? No. Do I still fully understand when people have hopes and dreams that seem like they're really out there? Um, no but I listen and I embrace the advice my mother gave to me on people need to have hopes and dreams. And I've come to believe as I get older that it's an innate human need that you have to back to our get off the hamster wheel, live outside the practical. 
we hope and dream in different ways and to different extents, but it's part of our human wiring to have something wonderful and glorious to look forward to, right? And to, to, to shoot for the stars in, I do it too, but in a more, more practical approach. So that's my story, you know, as far as our starter for the hopes and dreams. And I still struggle, Amy, with wrapping my brain around uh, when to interject right. the practical versus when you let the dreams keep on going, even if I feel they're unrealistic. So how do you deal with that? And have you had similar circumstances? Oh, completely. I, I think about um, with my kids, you know, well, I'm going to tell you a story first. Okay. They were talking about hopes and dreams. <laughs> and I remember, you know, I told you a while back that every February I'm ready to move out of Omaha. It used to, right. it used to be like a thing for about 10 years. I'm like, I'm out of here. It's cold. I'm miserable. <laughs> I'm getting out of here. So HGTV has a dream house every year. And one year it was in Texas. I'm like, I'll move to Texas. And I had my kids convinced that we were going to win this house and move. I was registering every day. They were like looking at the house. They were picking out bedrooms. They were all with it. So you, you were sharing <laughs> were your hopes totally. and dreams. Yes. Oh yeah. We were having so much fun. We didn't want it. I don't think I ever did a dream house again because <laughs> I was like so disappointed because I had convinced myself I am moving to this lake house in Texas and it's going to be warm in the winter. That was my thought. So the dreaming kind of that brought me back to that. And I'm just going to say nobody told me. I don't think I don't remember anybody saying you're not going to win that. It was just like, oh, wouldn't that be fun? <laughs> so, you know, and the reality was, I probably, you know, the odds of me winning were really low, but it was kind of fun to dream. It was fun to be there in that, in that concept of, oh, wouldn't this be fun? And just kind of go with it. So my question to you is, was there any negative that came out of that? No, there was absolutely no negative. Uh, maybe like a little moment of disappointment, but I knew in the back of my mind that I probably wouldn't win. So right. when the winner was announced, it was like, oh, bummer. Okay, what's next? <laughs> <laughs> it was fun and it was engaging and it was, it was everything. I mean, you're smiling when you're telling the story and it was a memory. And so, you, you know, it's fun to be fanciful once in a while. And frankly, there's a reason why I enjoy fiction books because they're not real. And right. like the suspense murder mysteries, you know, uh, I'm going to go back to my ex-husband. He was in law enforcement and we, this is more with shows. We'd watch them. He's like, that's not realistic. You know, CSI doesn't come back with lab reports within 24 hours. That takes months or it takes weeks. And right. you know, that doesn't happen and that's never going to happen. And he's, but I still read all the murder mysteries, the crime books, watch the TV shows, and I love them, but they're the most unrealistic thing in the world, but they're entertaining. Totally. And Hallmark movies. I'm like, I know how they're going to play out, but sometimes it's just enjoyable to sit there and watch it and right. see, um, see the happiness. You know, it's just like, all right, I know they're cheesy, but I do enjoy them. <laughs> so, so, yeah, I was going to talk about my kids because... The dreaming piece, I, so what resonates with me is when my kids were looking at colleges. <laughs> I remember, you know, when you're, you have, we have four kids, and I remember our first one, she started looking at colleges, and I'm like, you have to look at the money, you have to look at the cost, you have to, like, I was very, because we didn't know what we knew what it was going to look like, but we were very like, you know, and so after she went through the process and it all played out the way it played out, my second one, I realized I had a whole different attitude towards it. Cause I was like, go for it, apply at every school you want to go and we'll see what the money comes back and then we'll make our decision. So with the first one, I was very, um, you know, confining. I didn't want her to apply to the way off expensive dream schools because right. I'm like, I don't want to pay for that. That's, you know, and then from second, third and fourth, I'm like, go for it. 
apply wherever you want to apply and we'll see what kind of letters come back where the money falls and then we'll make a decision from there so um i think it's interesting because it, it's all worked out fine <laughs> there are times when i'm at my oldest she ended up going to a great school and loved it um but there was a, a switch in perspective for me and you know with kids we actually have a running joke with my boys um you know those uh, back to what momisms and what they think of with their mom there is a running joke between them because my typical question to, to them is we're out to dinner or what are your hopes and dreams and so it's the old oh you're getting it's not the birds and the bees it's the hopes and dreams talk with mom and it's actually <laughs> a story when <clears throat> It showed up on my time hop last night uh, that we were in Kansas City at a Chiefs game two years ago, and it was my niece, Kai, oh, and my son, Ben, and it was a beautiful Sunday, Garrett driving, <clears throat> and, you know, we're driving down, Garrett's driving, we are having a little bit of red cup, and I packed some snacks, we had the solo cup and a couple of drinks, those that weren't driving, and... Um, all safe nobody sent me to jail for that but yeah. my ben would have been 22 right now how old is he yes i think he would have been 22 but uh just finishing college and so i was as garrett would say drilling him and asking him about what does he want to do if he could shoot for the stars what would it be what are your it was the hopes and dreams the sandy lane hopes and dreams with the boys and pretty soon he wasn't answering me and uh I had asked him again. I thought he was pondering it and thinking. And finally, Kai says, um, uh, Aunt Sandy, he fell asleep. He's sleeping. Oh. See, he was so <laughs> done with the hopes and dreams. But part of that hopes Funny. and dreams, my kids tend to live in the moment. And so it was a way for me to get out of them, not what is your plan? What are you going to do tomorrow? The reason I think I started that narrative with him with him and them was because it was asking in a non-biased way of what are you going to do with your life where are you going to go what's your plan then to say what's meaningful to you what do you what if you shot for the moon what would it be and right. then me as the mom helping them plan on if there's a viable way to get there and so you know yeah. my hopes and dreams talk was actually a way for me to have a conversation that was about them and we've had good conversations that have come out of that on gosh you know ben loves sports and he you know if he had his i i often ask the question forget about and this is to anybody not just my kids but friends forget about credentials opportunity you know forget about just if if you could be anything in the world for a career what you'd be great at get get rid of any thoughts of i can't because of this barrier that barrier what would it be and you get a lot of fun answers from people on what that would be i have a friend who says a cabaret singer i have another friend a male friend who says he'd be an athletic director for usc and mine is i'd be a speech writer for the president now keep in mind the president isn't a human it, it would have to be somebody that i look up to because i'd have to feel good about but i'm really good at taking people's words that are passionate and being that person who directs them and communicates them to others so i'd be a speech writer for a president but nice. <laughs> that's kind of like with my kids what are your hopes and dreams and you know maybe you can't be a speech writer for the president but that might help go down that chain of uh a path that is meaningful for them whether it be work whether it be a hobby whether it be an interest group yeah. but it takes away the barriers of what you can't do you know hopes dreams have no barriers right dreams are right. dreams dreams are dreams right so in researching this yep. and oh, I, love it. That's this research. Topic, I know uh, one of the quotes i came across was a dream without a plan is a wish oh that's good i know and i thought about that because like you going through the questioning with the ben and if he would have identified if he wouldn't have fallen asleep and he would have identified his dream then possibly going through that process you could have helped him come up with a plan to getting to that dream instead of it just being a wish and i think 
there are two things I'm thinking of while we're talking. First is more of a funny timing is everything. I think I do remember Ben saying his dream was for the Chiefs to win at that moment. So he oh. didn't really want to talk about the hopes and dreams. <laughs> Being a typical sports-minded male, he was all about the game, right? Uh, they Love were playing it. the Broncos, actually, because Garrett and I had, it was a Broncos-Chiefs game. We had Broncos on and the other kids, I think, had Chiefs. But, oh. <laughs> um, but isn't there back to the whole point of when you encourage a dream and when you sh shut it down or how you, maybe you never shut it down, but how you verbalize support or encouragement to the practical. Okay, your, your, can you tell me your quote again? Dreaming. A dreaming without, a dream without a plan is just a wish. So I think you really have to dissect dreaming versus action. So you, you can dream, dream, dream. So back to your kids picking their college. But once you choose to initiate action, you have to add some real to that. So yes. I'm going to yes. buy the Neverland Ranch in California and make it into the next Disneyland. Well, that's a great dream, okay? But when you want to act and get the loan to buy that, you have to apply practicality to that action. So once the dream, and the dream might never turn into action, right? right? And if it's back to your point on when you talk about this dream and it was fun, there was really no action to it, right? Because the action was you guys had some fun, but you didn't put money down. You didn't move your family and wait to get the house. No, the <laughs> we were parked is, outside waiting for the key. No. <laughs> I think the key is once the dream starts to turn to action and you still have to use soft hands, but that's when you have to really apply the real and have a plan for it. Doesn't mean you could try different avenues. You might, you know, some of the best dreams, look at the people that have the best inventions, the biggest businesses, uh, the most success. Uh, they, they invent um, a new uh, medicine or technology. It's a dream and they might've taken a hundred different routes to get there and they were shut down, but they kept, taking action, but with every action point, you might run on a bunny. You might run out of time. You might, there's, there's things that depend on that. So I think the dream to action, and that's why I love your research, Amy, and I love that quote, and I'm gonna put that out there, is dreaming is great, and dreaming is what, that's internal, but the real conversations come with the action and even the ideal goes in there because if you're going after something that really isn't your ideal but you just don't want to give up sometimes you do have to give up on a dream and you figure out that maybe you're chasing the dream just because you chased it for so long and you want to win it's hard to give up on something you've invested a lot in but is it really your ideal right 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 so that brings me to one of my stories of um, joining a business a couple of years ago that I I was a huge fan of, and um, they had asked me to come in as a partner, and I was like, oh my gosh, I this is going to be so great! I have these great big dreams. I can see this like, you know, Balloon, I was be super great. passionate about it, and I was like, woo, okay, so. But the reality of that was completely different than the dream because Which a lot. I know exactly. I was like, okay, so how are we going to make this happen? And I jumped in, but I was still keeping my, my business that I had. And I was like, right. I can give this much time to this business and here are the ideas. And we were, you know, so I was giving time and I was giving more time. And then I found myself working um, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday with the new business. And so Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday was with my current business. So it just, so I kind of set aside freshly organized and let my employees kind of run it. And I was really working on this new business and I, you know, I did it for like three months and then I was like, so is this really my dream? Because <laughs> Is that my, is this my ideal? Is this my dream this or am my I just... ideal? And that was kind of getting to, is this my ideal? Is this aligning where, with, um, where I want to be and what I want to be doing with my time? And it, it started 
I started having the the reality set in of it of starting a new business is a lot of time mm -hmm. and and was I willing to set aside freshly organized or you know so I was at the point where I was gonna have to start making some choices and some things happen and it played out that I was just like you know what I don't think I can do this this is not where how I want to spend my weekends I'm not at that point in my life I'm like maybe if I were 25 and I knew like this is a passion I would really suck it up and do it but at <laughs> I was like yeah I, I don't want to be working and have this stress <laughs> so right. it was a little bit of a shift of you know, this could be really fun and exciting and a huge dream and it could be a really huge business. It was exciting, but yeah, I had and to pass. To expand on that, Amy, you know, yours was a lot of people and excitement and you taking that step back, which I think back to this discussion and our encouragement is to always take a step back and say, okay, why am I doing this? Because it's so right. easy to jump and say, this is great. Well, I had a similar circumstance but there's a bit of difference to it because the person who he was basically selling everyone on hopes and dreams for his own benefit. And so <clears throat> I think it's really good to acknowledge the fact that we all love hopes and dreams. And it's easy to be sold on that. Whether right. it's, think about the best salespeople, if they really want to get you. And I learned this through this startup I was a part of, he taught me how to sell people on things. I watched it. He said, bring up their grandmother who's dying, bring up, he knew exactly the hope and dream of uh, selling somebody on, on, on what could happen and make it personal to them. You can get a lot of people to buy off on that hopes, that hope and dream or that beautiful picture of what life can be like or what you can have. I mean, how many people have invested in a business, put money into what was gonna be the next big thing uh, and it's turned out to be nothing. I had a friend that did that and they call it their emu experiment because his brother had bought emus because they're gonna make all this money and farm them and they lost everything. And so then they put money into a restaurant and they lost their money. And, but it sounded so great at the time. And so many of us do this and I did this on a huge scale because not only did I buy off on the dreams and the hopes and the stories and all of us had the right not even the, the right passion and the right intent. We thought we were gonna change the world, but hundreds of people bought off on it. And if we would have taken a step back and been more practical in the beginning or seen the indications and done some more due diligence, we would have figured this out sooner. But it's so easy, Amy, to be part of something big. And especially if it's a dream, remember there's a difference between a dream and a nightmare. So a dream's always going to be good. And it's always right. it's not a nightmare. It's, it's dreamy. It's wonderful. Everybody wants the dreams to happen. We love a happy ending that we love the Hallmark movies and the, the crime shows because they catch the bad guy and she does win the lottery and you know, all the great things happen, but there's a real in all this that we have to acknowledge this in ourselves and be able to take a step back and say, even if I've invested a lot of time and energy and I want this dream to happen, I'm now taking action. So how realistic is it? And right. to be able to acknowledge it is a dream, dream versus action. And how is this a one in a thousand that it's going to happen? Is it one in a hundred? And to be able to acknowledge that and have the courage to pop the bubble of the other dreamers, because Dreamers multiply. They all believe in something and it's hard to be the person who pops the bubble of a dream. So I'm getting back. I'm going against my mother's, uh, <laughs> but my mother would have told me I should have figured this one out early. I tell you that back to action because this was not just a dream. It was action. It was people's money. It was people's lives. It was action. Right. Yeah. And you don't want to be the person that walks in the room burst the bubble and everyone's like wah 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 there right. went that you know <laughs> so but it is hard when people when there's actions happening people are putting money behind it then the the uh, cost of the dream right can be, once can be more than just what's in your head 
of once giving there's up. a cost associated back to is there a downside can there maybe that's the question to ask yourself is there could there be a downside to this are people getting involved are they quitting their jobs am i putting money into it is am i taking time away from my family you know dreaming you know back to your dream house in texas it was just fun you know it was as right. entertaining as reading uh -huh. a book or watching a movie there's nothing wrong with that it's when i think that's the decision making point because it is very good to dream and let those dreams build because there can be great tangible things that come out of dreaming and squashing that too soon which is my tendency could also take away from something that could develop into something big it's when you get to the action point and you know we're talking about big things at stake here too amy i think the other side with dreaming is the small things too and i can find myself being a cynic in different things that I have a lot of experience in. And there's a saying, and I don't even know who, I can't give this one to my mother. I don't know where it comes from. Garrett and I use it a lot. And it's, you don't know what you don't know. And I think we apply it to our kids. I could tell them when they're 19 and they're in love and they're gonna get married, that you're gonna meet other people. You know, being uh, committed to someone is hard. A relationship is a lot of work. And they look at me with deers in the headlight, deer in the headlights, they don't know what they don't know. I'm telling them something that's just so foreign to them because they haven't experienced it. Right. So I find people with dreams, and I'll use that as an uh, uh, example, where I'm sitting there going, oh my gosh, you know, the chances of this relationship, them actually being, you know, what what is it, 74? What's the Beatles song where they go back and they're, when I'm oh, yeah, yeah. 60? When I'm 69. I'll have to find it. But, you know, yeah, yeah. the beautiful <laughs> song of we're going to grow old together and it's all going to be beautiful. Right. But, but what about those situations, Amy? Those simple things in life, like, uh, and we never say anything, but I use the example, both Garrett and I have been through a divorce. So we go to weddings and we don't say a word, but both of us are thinking about the divorce right. I know that sounds awful, but it's our real in our experience and we know what the divorce rate is and we wonder what are the chances are going to stay married. We don't say anything, but right. we're cynics because we know what we know. They don't know what they don't know. So how do you balance that? Right. Wish for the best. Wish for the best. Yeah. Well, you know, we don't want to squash anyone's wedding day. <laughs> right? like, never say a word. Just keep our mouth I'm shut. never going to be invited to a wedding again. <laughs> right. Right. Um, but I think a lot of times, even if somebody were to tell you something as a young in a relationship or, or having this dream, if somebody would have given you wisdom, sometimes you just have to learn for yourself. And right. you have to go through it. And so, I, you know, to me, I'm thinking of one of my kids had a long-term relationship and she broke up with him, you know, last December after about right. five years. So seeing some of the early signs of, oh, you know, but she seemed happy. And so we... We just kind of decided to keep supporting her and keep and and just giving having an open door for the conversations of you know the situations and working through them and seeing you know how you can keep moving forward but still being supportive and then her coming to the realization herself that you That's know this great. just isn't a good match so it was supporting this, but also being open to listening when the obstacles hit. And going through the steps with her. So I think what I love about that is you now action has happened because they continue with the relationship. And rather than telling her where this is going to go, you let her go through the steps. But you also didn't completely stand off and say, this is your dream. This is your thing. Figure it out for yourself you're helping her critically think through the different right. situations, which is actually what I did with one of my kids. <clears throat> it was painful because I, I, I had a pretty good idea where it was going to go, but he had to go through the steps on his own. Right. And exactly. I was painfully there with him every step of the way, but saying, here's how this is going to go or comparing it or telling, did nothing. 
but holding his hand through the steps while giving him advice for every situation as they wow. arose was probably the most effective way for him to learn on his own. Right. And I kind of think of um, like a couple of my kids are majoring in the arts. You know, I have one who's wants to be, uh, I think she's going into sound now. That's like her reel for films, for movies yep. and stuff. She's going to do sound. Um, and then Trevor wants to do, so Cameron wants to do sound and Trevor wants to do comedy writing and stand up comedy. So love it. Yeah, and these are really exciting types of fields, but the reality of them getting to the point where they're sustainable <laughs> and supporting themselves with this art um, could be a longer process than, you know, going to school as a nurse or a doctor where you come out and you need it, there's a job right. for you. You know, it's a different process. So it's been challenging supporting those dreams. It's not, I shouldn't say that. It's not challenging supporting them. It's fun to support the dreams, right. but it's been challenging not to keep telling them what the reality of it is. I would say that's probably more, more of what it is because I love that they're doing it. It's very exciting, but um, you know, my, and you would appreciate this, okay, you can stay on our healthcare plan until you're 26. And then at that point, you know, just FYI, okay, so. you got to figure that out. So. <laughs> but there's a little bit of a, you know, you got a cushion, but at some point you're going to have some, some money due and you're going to have to be able to support that. You know, Amy, you bring up something funny because I sit here on my high horse and say, oh, I'm so real. And, you know, the dreamers and I'm usually so practical. Well, just so you know, I got my dreaming stories too. And it's very similar to your kids. When I was a senior in high school, I was a very good student. Um, second in my class, I was a little studier. I was good at a lot of different things. Uh, but I had had uh, been approached, my art teacher took me under his wing and um, had me apply for some different art schools. And I had a scholarship to go to art school. And on the other hand, I was very good at accounting and finance. And I wanted to go to school for accounting. So that was my, the, my choice was the, 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 go to school for accounting or go and get the scholarship, which felt so glamorous to me and go to the art school. Now, just so you know, if you do the math, which is what I preach all the time to my kids, the cost of that art school, less whatever scholarship I had was like five times the cost of what it would have been for me to go to accounting school. Well, my dad and pushed and pushed and kept saying, what are you going to do? You know, and I was a dreamer. I said, I'm going to do art. No, but what are you going to do with that? I had no clue. I hadn't right. thought it out. How are you going to pay for that debt? I will figure it out. I was doing all the things that now I preach about. Uh, I had dreams, but I had no action plan to put them together. And he played hardball with me and basically said, you know, it doesn't work. The math doesn't work and you can fight me on this, but you're not coming up with a viable plan. And I'm not paying for your debt to go to art school because it sounds great to you. I thank my dad every day for that. Okay. Yeah. But he, he pretty much put a kibosh on it and I went for accounting and you know, it was, a, I was painfully pissed at him back in that time. And when it came to action, it didn't make sense. So fast forward about five years ago, um, after I had left the accounting firm and I was CFO of a startup, I'm like, I have done finance my co entire career. I want to go back, not necessarily to art, but I want to do the other side, you know, of what is it's time for me, call it a midlife crisis, but I wanted to do something different. And I actually went through uh, a whole life planning session where I mapped everything out. And when I came to what my de big decision point for me was, is what am I going to do for a career? Because I want to go new. I kept saying, I'm going to be a writer. And Garrett went to all these sessions with me and he was gently challenging me. Well, how does that work? You know, you still have kids in school. How are you going to, what, how, what does that mean? He was doing the same thing my dad did and Amy, I got Bucky. Well, I'll be successful at whatever I want to do. I will, you know, I'm going to do it and I'm going, it's going to be, but I, I didn't put any action around it or any tangibles and he never squashed my dream. 
but he kept telling me, you might have to lead with finance. You know, you might not have to put a line in the sand and I'm going to have to tell him this next time we have date night, but he was right because over those years I've kind of transitioned, you know, it wasn't a direct cutoff and I got passionate about different content. It wasn't, I'm going to be a writer today. I'm going to be a speaker today. It was a transition and it was even a transition with my kids getting done with school and me leaving Omaha where I was known for finance. So, you know, I can flip this on myself and then look at people who have done a good job in what we're talking about, not in my shoes, but in, in saying, okay, my dad's was a tough call and good for him because he had to be the bad guy, but he wasn't just going to let me accumulate a bunch of school debt or not have a plan. So he put an end to it and yeah. Garrett used kid gloves and, you know, gently helped me find what I wanted to do and transition that plan into action. Right. So thank right. you to my dad was, and Garrett. Not just my mom. Yeah. 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 There you go. <laughs> not all about my mom. They, they got shout outs today. That's okay. shout outs today. I just figured it out. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's one of the things when we were touring schools for Cameron and, you know, she was going cinematography, we had two schools that we toured had distinct differences. One was very artsy and it was all about the art. And um, then one was art as a business. And so they're like, we don't, subscribe to this starving artist philosophy. We have artists that are interns. We have artists, you know, who are working on movie sets. We have, so there was, um, and she ended up going to that school. That was Columbia okay. College okay. because that's the one she went to. And the other one, when we were on the tour with a student, uh, we said, so are, you know, who's, are you doing any internships? And and she was like, well, so she's a senior. She was like, well, I, I know of one person doing an internship. And I was just a little like, yeah, no, this isn't going to work. <laughs> we we got to have this as a business. So we're real. Anyway, we're real. <laughs> we got to be real. We're not going to be all lofty and let's do some coloring today. No, I'm kidding. It's all good. <laughs> it's all good. Isn't right. dreaming fun though, Amy? I dreaming is great. I love it. I love to hear the kids' dreams too. So this dreaming conversations really, uh, it's a good one. I like it. I like thinking about people who have dreams. I love people uh, sharing their dreams. It always gives you good insight as to who they are or who they want to be. One of my dreams, I was thinking about it this morning because last week we were talking about ordinary days and I started journaling. I said, oh, I'm exactly. going to journaling and it's going really well. And today, I, this morning, I was thinking about the topic and I didn't journal yesterday. I just, it got away from me. And so I started writing this morning. I'm like, I need to do this. And I was like, what is, what's one of my dreams right now? And so um, I came up with, I really want to do some urban living. And I know I've mentioned this before, right. but so I was kind of thinking where, you know, this bucket list of traveling. Yep. I have dreams of traveling, but I would really like to do and it. And my mom and I were having this conversation when I was visiting her because she was talking about doing something different too. And, and it struck me, I'm like, mom, you can make a decision now and you can change your mind later. So if you decide to go somewhere, you can change your mind. And so that was hitting me this morning. I'm like, I can have this dream. I can Go and I can live the urban life and I can change my mind and come back if I, if I don't like it. And so, um, it was, it's kind of, uh, it's kind of fun to have dreams. And uh, I think Amy, going back to an old episode, uh, the life script model. Yeah. I think the life script model happens a lot because people aren't dreaming. They're just doing what's put in front of them because it's the easiest path and they, they just, that's what to do. And they're not dreaming and they're not seeing other things as possibilities. Right. 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 Yeah. Completely agree. All right. So we have a question here from listeners and this one says, what if you have a dream, but no one is supportive? 
So what do you think, Sandy? So I'm thinking of you dreaming of going to art school. Did you have any support with that dream? Oh, I sure tried. I rallied everybody I could. Now I tell you, <laughs> you had your art teacher, your art teacher, right? Totally my art teacher. I, I have a vivid memory of being at Christmas at my grandparents and lobbying my aunts and uncles with my dad in the other room and being mad. You know, I was trying to get support. So just going back to our uh, two episodes ago on activism. Right, right. <laughs> um, so here's the other thing, Amy, is I think you're always even you're always going to find people who are supportive of you, even if they're not, because there's this human tendency, especially with women, to just say, oh, you're right, you know, no matter for people to agree with you. Right. So right. what I'd say is I found people to agree with me because I really needed that, even though I didn't know what I didn't know. It wasn't even what I knew deep down. This was totally a case of I didn't know what I didn't know. And I wasn't being practical. And I found people who would hear me. Were they actually supportive? I'm pretty sure if they were adults, they knew exactly where my dad was coming from. Because, you know, I grew up in a working class town. We, you know, this was, nobody was silver spoon. You didn't just, you know, we thought through things in this manner, right? Um, so what I tell you is, I think people listen. I don't know if it was supportive. I would tell you that fast forward to five years ago, it was the encouragement and support of people as I continued to develop to say, will you write that book? Are you going to do that? Uh, my mom pushing me to be the one to write the book for the family uh, memories. And I definitely felt support there. Nobody offered me a, uh, advance for a book deal or it wasn't a publisher um would i've given up on it if no one back to the question if you have a dream and no one is supportive i don't think so i think i'd keep it more to myself until i developed it sometimes i put dreams out there before they're fully developed and i've learned to hold them a little closer to my coat and develop them more and then if I develop, because I've had business ideas too, and then once they're more developed and tangible to action and I'm getting non-support or people are saying that's not going to work, I take it more seriously. And maybe right. I have abandoned different concepts and ideas because I've gotten good feedback once I've developed it into an action plan. Right. How about you? Yeah. Um, so I... I love what you said. I, there's some things that are sticking out with me is if no one is supportive, then I like the idea of keeping it close to yourself. But I would also say, um, share it with other people. So if you have a circle of people who are not supporting your dreams, then let's, let's share it with some other people because maybe you can get some positive feedback on it or just, you know, any kind of feedback or encouragement if you're ready. Um, I, and I'm going to give an example of me writing a book because I started last summer or a year ago writing a book and I dedicated time to it. And uh, I was kind of, I was keeping it really close to myself. Only a few people know. And new and I wasn't um I wasn't seeking support or anything like that. I was like, I'm just gonna hunker down and try to do this. And so I wasn't getting a lot of support. But then I started walking with a friend and she was asking me something and I started sharing it. And she got so excited about it. Nice. That it was a little bit like a oh my gosh, this feels so good to have this kind of support and this excitement around this dream. And it was a bit of a shift of, oh wow, maybe this is going to work. Maybe this is going to resonate with people. Maybe, you know, it was just a little bit, um, it's, it was just what I needed. And well, so that was really nice. And then, then I started finding other people in my close circle and I started sharing it with certain people to um, get some feedback and people like my sister I shared it with her and I actually shared you know the chapters with her to get feedback and to get and um, 
the encouragement has helped because I didn't do that until a year later, like this summer, I just shared it with my sister. And so now I'm like at the point where, okay, I'm ready to go now. And I shared it with another good friend and she helped. But so I would say if you don't have people supporting it and you really want to make it happen, then share it with some other people who are, um, not as realistic maybe <laughs> i don't know i don't know what the word is for the people but some people may are better at supporting hopes and dreams than others <laughs> and so just expanding that circle a little could help yeah my mom tends to be the one who's more supportive of the hopes and dreams as you would suspect uh, but remembering back to that time my memory and memories get tough when you go that far back you know i have a vivid memory of being in my grandparents kitchen rallying my aunts and uncles but i don't remember my mom being for or against but her kind of staying out of it is my yeah. memory is i couldn't rally her and she knew enough back to the to, it was past the point of encouragement because i didn't have any viable offers that made any sense yeah um, but i remember her being more silent she probably encouraged me while i was in the art class but it just didn't pan out with the set of options that i had right yeah interesting yeah very interesting all right so let's talk about the real in these situations and the ideal because that's kind of our how we tie it all together okay um so i'll talk about the real i think the real is it's really good to have hopes and dreams i don't think it's um i don't think it would be a good way to live if you didn't have any hopes and dreams Okay. What do you think? I, I totally agree. And I have to challenge. I, I'm much better about it now. When I was on the hamster wheel and doing the uh, life script model, I tended to be, I almost disciplined myself to be more practical. And once the kids were raised and uh, it helped, you know, getting off the hamster wheel and the life script model, even when it wasn't necessarily my choice. I looked at things differently and Garrett and I would have hopes and dreams together because it happened to us together and even finding a new place to live. That was a leap of faith. And a lot right. of people said, they told me, you can't do that. You can't, you, leaving the big firm, you can't do that. Your yeah. kids are going to need you, you have financial handcuffs. And I'm like, my kids are almost adults. You can't yeah. do that. You can't do that. You can't, you have to stay with that firm. And I wasn't going to do that. And you have to stay in Omaha. And what about your kids? And, you know, yeah. we're crazy for a year. We're here and two kids live in Colorado. And I don't push them one way or the other. I'll ask them what they want. But, yeah, I, I think there is an awesome thing about hopes and dreams. And that's where some of the best things come from. But when it comes time to take action, obviously, Garrett and I had to think through all the decision-making points of that action and what that looked like from finance to jobs to kids. And that is what brought out the real in it, right? right. And, and then is this our ideal? Are we fine where we're at? Why are we doing this? Are we doing it just because we can? Are we doing it because we want to? You know, we had to go through all those things before we made these changes. Right. And I would say another piece of the real is sometimes we have to put our hopes and dreams on hold. Like right. sometimes it just doesn't fit into the reality of the moment. And, right. you know, I go back to me wanting to do some urban living. Um, I didn't think that was going to be comfortable or feasible with four kids and a dog. <laughs> you know, it would have been cozy. We would have been fine. There's people that are doing it all the time, but you know, I did enjoy having the space and having, you know, the backyard and, um, the things that suburban life gave us and the kids. So it, I had to put it on hold and now I'm at the point where it could become a reality <laughs> instead of just a hope and a dream someday soon, hopefully. But, um, it's, so the real of it is sometimes we do have to wait on the hopes and dreams, but that doesn't mean we have to give up on them. It right. just means right. that maybe that's going to be in the future and that's, that's the real. Yep. 
And I think you've hit on the ideal where we have in this conversation is you always have to take a step back and say, because you can, you have to take a step back and ask yourself, is this really something I want right now? Is it, or am I so obsessed with it because it's been in my head, you know, because things change, situations change, something new comes up. It's really to take a step back and say, is this what I want? Is this still the priority that I'm aiming for or have things changed and then have the courage to adjust if you need to because sometimes it's hard when you especially when you're not keeping it close let's just say i told everybody about writing my book and life changed and i either found a new passion in um the speaking circuit or found that i can put content out differently to the consumer than writing a book but i'm so hell-bent on writing this book and i told everyone about it it's hard to work my way back, which isn't the case, but could be, but then challenge yourself and say, is this still achieving what I was dreaming for or do I need to adjust? Yes, completely. And I would say the other ideal is honoring other people's hopes and dreams. Right. And just, and knowing that it may not work out, support them though, and maybe be a little bit of a check on them every once in a while if it goes a little crazy, just ask the questions so that they're thinking through things. Um, But just letting people know that you're there behind them and for them to go for it. I love that. That's how we're going to close before we get to the wrap question. I love the concept of honoring other people's hopes and dreams and honoring your own. And honoring your own and knowing that you can change your mind, like you said. Journaling will actually help. Journaling is a great way to talk about hopes and dreams, what's on your mind and help uh, keep those things top of top of mind and put some scope around it, some thoughts yeah. around it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Wrap question. Uh, very good. Wrap question today. I know we are, we need to wrap this baby up. Yep. What recently listened to podcast episode stands out to you? Do you have one in mind? I do have one in mind. And actually, I, you, you, I thought about when you were talking about Cameron and looking at schools, I love film streams. Back to cinematography. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm a film streams junkie. And yeah. uh, obviously things have changed with COVID, but they started a podcast. And okay. they've had, they have a trailer. It's called Back Row Center. Back Row, comma, Center. Which I think is cool because a lot of people, that's their favorite seat in the theater. And They've had, they have their trailer and they've had two episodes, episode one and episode two. And I loved episode one because in this year of COVID, they talked about uh, the best movies of the year. And again, their kind of movies, it's not going to be the blockbusters. And and then they actually get into what's coming on Netflix, different venues. But this last one I listened to twice, Amy, it was so good. They talked about the Toronto International Film Festival that they go to. So the whole background of how they pick movies. And, you know, I loved being in the background. And then what they did is they they talked about how it was supposed to be different with COVID because they're going to have to watch from at home rather than going to it. They paused it like where we do our ad and they came back like six weeks later after they did it and they talked about the best movies. They talked about the experience. So anyway, anybody who is a movie junkie, you will love back row center. Okay. I, I'm going to share that with a few people I know that are movie junkies. <laughs> That's a good. I love film streams too. Um, I just started, one of my friends shared with me a podcast, Dare to Lead, and it's Brene Brown. Brene Brown. Okay, I've After listened to a couple her, of those. Okay. It's a new up. one. Oh, it's, it's her new brand. One. Yeah, it's a brand new Dare to Lead podcast. Okay. And um, it, it was really good. And I just listened to her first one. There's some really good nuggets in there. And um, she talks a lot about, well, you mentioned this. We have a nice problem where people are trying to, um, they're actually fear the problem. And so they just try to smooth things over and make nice right. instead of, you know, oh, tackling a problem. Bad. I know. <laughs> so I thought that was interesting. And another thing was, um, I took notes. Can you tell I took notes? I'm looking at my notes. (laughs) She talked about daring leadership, having heart, and that we have to embrace the suck. Like, 
we have to embrace that we we sometimes are going to be vulnerable there's going to be fear but out of that comes courage and to do something different. I love Brene Brown. I just found it. There's Brene Brown. You Brene know, Brown. I do okay. too. She's very insightful and uh, encouraging. I think she's very encouraging. And she's just, she's just authentically herself. I was going to say very, she's real is what I was going to, and you said authentically herself. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, she's very real. So. Oh. Those are two podcasts that we are enjoying. And I'm just going to say kudos. I have Cameron, my movie girl. She just started a podcast too. And they're talking Ellie. movies. Yeah. So when I, um, after I listen to it, I'll let you know how it is. Okay. Uh, okay. Can't wait. Okay. It's all movie talk though, I think. Nice. I love it. <laughs> all right. Hey, until um, next week, Amy. Until next week. Thanks all for right. joining. Goodbye, everyone. Bye.